what you saw in a silver company that made you change careers. You know, I saw I saw a tremendous amount of value in the sector, the use case for it, industrial, the electrification of the world, all your electronics and tools, uh, jewelry. But it also has all the same characteristics as gold as far as hedge against inflation, safe storage of money. Uh, so that part to me is, is very exciting. I love the exploration world. It is dynamic. It's risky. Uh, mm -hmm. As an investment advisor at Canaccord, I spent years guiding CEOs. So we're, we're, we're early on into the markets, but we did come to the markets uh, with a bang, mm. you know, and that happened because of all the work, all the technical work and the geology that came to the forefront since I landed in the seat uh, a year ago. And it was nothing short of exceptional, The starting with the rock samples, you know, 300,000 grams per ton silver and up to a kilo of gold emanating from a 20 square kilometer footprint of just bonanza grade. And then of course the natural uh, progression is to do channel sampling uh, to figure out, you know, targeting for drills and where we're going to put it. And again, multi-kilo bonanza grade emanating from everywhere. And so we had to embark on our first uh, ever drill program there. And this was five years in the making from our previous parent company, Orin, uh, when this project was, was put on the map. And so to finally be able to do that and commencing last June on our first program, 5,000 meters, 16 holes into a such a large area you know we got a lot of uh people saying while we were commencing saying oh it could be just on surface maybe you found some sort of surface anomaly and it didn't exist at depth right uh so to come out and within our first six holes have our first plus kilo intercept you know huge sigh of relief yeah this is existing at depth it's existing in the third dimension now let's let's see if we can hone this in and and capture some more and then sure enough, on our 16th hole, our last hole that we finished drilling at the beginning of December, just released to the market a couple of weeks ago, um, our best intercept of the entire program came on our last hole. Mm. Yeah, our new permit, it's called a, a DIA or a DIA, allows us for 20 additional pads, but this time, instead of two holes per pad, we're allowed 10. So that's up to right. 200 holes in this. Now, okay. obviously that's a lot of drilling and probably not one that we're gonna get all completed in this next phase, mm. um, but it gives us the flexibility on each pad to kind of fan out our drill holes. So, but it just gives us more opportunity, more flexibility to be more nimble uh, and just as aggressive. And so what we're seeing in the market as of late is uh, the price of silver picking up. Mm. Our our stock, for whatever reason that be as a junior miner, trades very highly correlated to the price of silver. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Mm -hmm. And if silver goes on a run, I mean, we saw it when we listed in the market. Uh, last June, mm -hmm. silver was at thirty-one, thirty dollars an ounce, yeah, and we were we were rocking. Actually, probably got ahead of ourselves, right? We had a, I think a uh, two hundred fifty million dollar market cap without a drill in the ground. Yeah, that wasn't any of our doing. It was just the 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 narrative, the excitement around silver. Yeah, and that was my first time seeing it. You know, and getting back to when I was brought on board, uh, Ivan he made a comment. He says, "When silver goes, you will you will feel it." It is a, it's a different phenomenon than, than hmm. gold and any other precious metal. So that was my first taste of it. Unfortunately, we saw silver come off uh, since our first day of listing and, and trickle all the way down to almost you know, $21 an ounce. But as of late, uh, the macroeconomic picture, uh, some of the, the world crisis out there, it's, it's, it's certainly giving it a little bit of, of lift. Um, so again, back to your question, we're in no critical need for, for treasure right now. If we get some tailwinds moving forward and it's supporting our share price where we think it, we should be valued, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come to market and, and get ready for our next phase. Sure. So last, last year, you know, the Michael Hendrickson, our chief geo, had been working um, in the background for a couple of years actually to include Hurricane Silver in the portfolio. Uh, we acquired it from a group of former Newmont uh, geologists and we had a ton of faith and trust in the, in the technical work that they provided to date. Uh, so we brought that into the mix, not as a hedge against Kurabaya, but to provide our shareholders with another world-class swing. And since then, we only had a very small window. Uh, once we got social access in Peru to get in there, we sent a small team up there to do some reconnaissance channel sampling. And within a couple of weeks, they came back with just incredible channel sample results uh, with veins outcropping everywhere. We found some great indications that there's high-grade silver there. We have historical 
mining adits and shafts that mm. are believed to go a, a few hundred meters uh, underground. Um, and so once upon a time, someone was there, you know, mining silver, which gives a huge indication. Mm. It's nothing that we can use on a resource. No, but it's anecdotal support, right? It's, it's incredible. And so to have multi kilo rock samples plus kilo channel samples, uh, in a great area located just north of Cusco, um, we can't wait to get back up there and bring that thing, hopefully to drill ready stage by the end of the calendar year. Uh, trust me when I tell you, um, you know, things will turn. And if we get some tailwinds in the, in the silver market, and once people, uh, as your audience, will see the story for what it is, um, we're going to get drilling here really soon. And that's always the most exciting part. You saw our company the last time we just about embarked on drilling, and we were at dollar ninety per share, yeah. right? Uh, so let's bring on those times again, because that's exciting. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3,000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn $500,000, $1 million, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke. And you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where do you start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them. And if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange. And one of the biggest are, for example, Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well-established exchanges. But, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.